Today I've got for you guys the best settings for Starfield on PC to achieve the maximum possible FPS whilst also maintaining incredible visuals in this absolutely beautiful game. So without further ado, let's jump into the settings under the display area. We'll start off with borderless full screen. You just want to leave this to on. There is no exclusive full screen option in Starfield, which doesn't matter because we're running on the latest version of DirectX where borderless full screen runs just as well as exclusive full screen. We still get really good input latency and we get the equipment of a full screen game which you can also alt tab out of very quickly so very nice window size will be grayed out if you've got borderless full screen on select monitor just make sure you've got it selected on the correct monitor if you've got multiple monitors you'll know it's on the right screen doesn't take much explanation. Next up, we've got dynamic resolution. As it explains over here, what this will do having it on is lower the resolution of the game when you get in situations which in theory would lower the frame rate. So it maintains the frame rate by lowering the resolution. I'd recommend most people actually start off with this off. You can come back here at the end and turn it on if after we do all of the things here, you're still struggling and you're still having situations in the game where things start to hitch, things start to slow down, the FPS drops. But for most people, if you can run dynamic resolution off, it's going to be your best bet because it's just going to keep a nice, steady frame rate, nice, steady resolution, and nothing's going to be fluctuating there. Then we've got render resolution scale, which is essentially what percentage of our overall native resolution, you know, 1440p, 1080p, whatever you're running, what percentage of that are you actually rendering the game out at? By default, weirdly, the game puts you at 75%, which is not normal. Most games would put you at 100% out the gates. But the reason they do this is because this game is a pretty hefty boy. And honestly, I would recommend that you start off leaving this at 75%, go through all the settings as I do in this video. And then at the end, if you have a little bit of performance that you want to gain, you know, you still want to get a bit more FPS, then you can start bringing this down to maybe 70 or maybe 65. I probably wouldn't go lower than that. Or if you're the opposite side where you think, oh, I've actually got quite a lot of FPS, but I want my game to look a bit sharper and I look a little bit more like native, then you can bring this up to maybe 80 or 85%. Once again, I wouldn't go higher than that though. Between 85 and 65%, honestly, the game still looks really good not being at 100%. Graphics preset will have already changed to custom off of changing these two things, and that's fine. We can leave that as is. Then we've got shadow quality. What I'd recommend you do for this one is bring this down to medium. Basically, low shadows in this game look pretty bad um, and medium shadows look considerably better so you're really maintaining a decent amount of visual fidelity anything above medium the high and the ultra really doesn't add much visual fidelity it just starts to chip away at your fps much more than you'd like to so medium is the perfect balance between fps and visuals. Indirect lighting is pretty much exactly the same thing as shadows. I find that medium looks considerably better than low without any of the FPS costs that you get from running high or ultra. So put that at medium as well. Reflections is a bit of personal preference. If you really don't care for them whatsoever and you just want to achieve maximum performance at all times, then just shove this on low and forget about it. However, if you want a little bit more immersion in the game and you're happy to sacrifice a little bit of performance here and there, then medium is going to be a good option for you. Definitely don't run these at high. On my build, running a 3090 where I've got a little bit of performance breathing room, I'm going to be running these at medium. Particle quality is unfortunately going to be the first setting I recommend you shove all the way on low. It has a pretty heavy effect on FPS, especially in regards to things like explosions in game. And you just need to save all the performance, especially when you're in those gunfights, when you need the performance most, uh, you definitely need particle quality on low. And then we followed that up with volumetric lighting, probably one of the most infamous settings for FPS drops across pretty much every game it exists in. I'm going to recommend you also bring this all the way down to low at the moment. This is all to do with the quality of light rays and the fogginess that you get on some of the planets. It just gives you a really, really necessary performance boost, bringing this all the way down to the lowest. If at any point you just don't like it or it breaks immersion, go ahead and bring it up to medium, but you are going to be costing a decent amount of FPS in doing so. Crowd density, make sure this is on low as well for a nice performance boost. I know a lot of people are going to complain that this is going to break immersion in some way and that when you're in situations where you need crowd density to be high to stay immersed, it's just going to ruin it. Well, if you just turn it to low right at the start of the game, you ain't going to miss anything later on. Any people that you actually need to talk to or interact with or see, they're all going to be there. You're not going to miss out on anything. 
put this to low, you won't regret it. Now we've got motion blur, which for me, I will always recommend that you put off because I hate motion blur. I don't like it at all in games and it can cause a performance hit as well. If you are someone who likes motion blur, then turn it up to low, but don't go any higher than that. I know it can help make certain bits of motion feel a bit smoother and more immersive. Not for me though, I'm gonna be running this off. Next up, we've got GTAO quality or ambient occlusion, which is the quality of shadows in the dark corners and dark sort of bits where objects meet. Uh, we've got an object sitting on the floor and you have the dark shadow around the bottom of it and things like that. This is one I would also recommend you bring all the way down to low. Grass quality, I'd actually recommend you leave on high. It doesn't seem to have much effect on performance and it only has any effect on planets which have grass on them, which a lot of the barren planets, you're not even going to think about it anyway so you can happily just leave this on high and not really have much effect and have some pretty nice looking grass and then next up we've got contact shadows i put these at medium in the same way i put shadow quality on medium essentially they look better than having them on low with kind of similar performance and putting it any higher you're just getting pretty similar visuals but you're just losing a little bit of performance every time. So medium is the happy medium. For V-Sync, it's defaulted at on. I'd recommend you turn it off. It may give you a bit of screen tearing, but it will help with overall input latency and how the game feels. I never recommend that you run V-Sync in games unless you're running a G-Sync monitor setup, which I'm not gonna cover in this video. Um, so yeah, just keep it off. Next for the upscaling, it's by default set at FSR2 or Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2 made by AMD. There is no DLSS option in here if you're used to using that in other games, but honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. FSR2 by AMD is better in most circumstances in most games I've tested it in. What this upscaling does, if you don't know, is it takes your game, renders it out at the lower resolution, which we set up here, and then it upscales it back to look as close to the original native resolution so it doesn't look blurry. Honestly, you can just leave this at FSR2. It is the best option in here. I would not recommend running upscaling off in this game. It just tanks your performance so much unless you are running like the beefiest system ever. And FSR2 just still looks really, really good. It's probably one of the best implementations of AMD FSR2 that I've ever seen. You then pair your upscaling with a little bit of sharpening. By default, it's set at 70. I found that 80 is a nice balance for me at 1440p. If you were playing at 1080p, you might want to just jack this all the way up to 100. It's all personal preference. It doesn't have any effect on FPS, so just try out different sharpening values and see what looks best for you. Enable VRS or variable rate shading by default is set at on and in theory should help you out with hitching or stuttering in relation to rendering out certain scenes in the game. I would only recommend turning this off if you run into some weird performance stability in game. I'm yet to run into anything and therefore VRS is doing its job. So just play it by ear, see how it runs. Most people should just leave it at on. The last two things we've got in here are film grain intensity and enable depth of field, which are both cinematic effects. The depth of field is things closer to you look really sharp and things further away look blurred. Uh, film grain intensity is basically the graininess on the screen that makes it look like it's filmed with a camera. Personally, I don't like either of these. I put film grain intensity to zero, enable depth of field to off. In theory, neither of these have effects on performance, so it's personal preference, but yeah, I'd recommend you turn them off. One more really important bonus setting that I changed earlier that has really helped my aim in this game is all to do with your look sensitivity vertical and horizontal. I think this was similar in Fallout 4, but which I played years ago, also made by Bethesda. But for some reason, the vertical and horizontal sensitivities are not one to one by default. If I put these both at 30%, the horizontal feels really quick and the vertical feels slower. To fix this, what you want to do is take your look sensitivity horizontal and you want to put this to around half of the vertical. There's probably a more in-depth way of doing this that is going to come out as a PSA on Reddit or as a video later on. But for now, doing this has just made my aim feel a lot more uniform, vertical and horizontal. You can then set your mouse look sensitivity or your uh, controller look sensitivity here um, and that will basically scale both of these up. Uh, in the same way so I can make myself look around a lot quicker by bringing it higher or a lot slower by bringing it lower. Really weird one, but thought I'd add that in there as well. 
Now that we've got all the in-game settings done, you need to go and watch this video next where I give you guys the in-depth breakdown of the NVIDIA control panel settings that will give you the best performance in Starfield as well as any other game on PC.